with the second Atmos demo. We just so showed you what you need to do to get the network properly up and running. You have now two systems running, Atmos BE01 and Atmos BE02. I'll minimize this. As you can see in my master slave, in my master system, I can successfully ping the other node. I'm going to stop this now and minimize the window. I'm now actually logged in into the console of the Atmos system. Also, the second node, the slave node, is uh, very happy pinging its master node. Also, there is seen, there's no problem on network connectivity. I'll also, minimize this one. What you see here is the uh, configuration status of the slave no node after I powered it on. After the Pixie boot, it uh, fully installed itself. It takes a few hours, but as you can see, the installation is finished, so we're happy with that. Go back, back to the system dashboard of my resource management group. I can now see that I have two successful config nodes. Okay, so our system is ready to use. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a tenant. Since this is a very empty system, there is no tenant available, which reminds me I'm going to take a snapshot. Okay. So we're going to create a tenant. A tenant is an area in the cloud space, in the storage cloud, to which you can subscribe and which can, uh, which will provide you storage. Authentication is local. If you want to connect to an LDAP, you choose remote authentication. Okay, and a tenant name. We're going to make uh, a tenant to store all kinds of documents I have. So this, was, this will be my library, my dad. Actually, it's going to be a library in general because I'll be having more than one subscriber to it. Not only myself, but also my gorgeous wife, my lovely children, and who knows, maybe even Cat will put some documents in there. Click Submit and wait for the tenant creation. Okay, we're back. We have a library. It doesn't have a tenant admin yet. Uh, so I'm going to edit it. First thing I'm going to do is add a tenant admin. I'm going to keep it simple and the username will be admin library. Actually, I'm going to call it tenant admin. Save. The user does not exist. So he asks me if we want to add it. Yes, of course, we want to add it. The password will be password. Okay, save. Now Firefox wants to remember this. Remember it, that's cool. Once we have a tenant admin, we need to define the access nodes. That means which are the nodes that can be used to access to uh, access this tenant. I'm gonna put in my whole RMG, so both the BE001 as a BE002. That will be eligible for web services. One will be SIFs and one will be NFS. I'm gonna do it the other way around. If you make them SIFs or NFS, you can connect to them in the um, in the host there will be a malware ifs file system that's only visible when you make it uh, sifs or nfs not if it's a web service okay save no the ip addresses the public ip addresses of those two systems okay we don't require SSL, we don't require web services, we don't require external share secret store. So now we're going to log out 
and we're gonna log in back again as Tenant Admin. Log out. We're now gonna log in as a Tenant Admin. The tenant, I believe, was library. The username is Tenant Admin, and the password is password, which he already remembers. So now we created the tenant. Here we have the tenant name, the library. Here we have a tenant ID. We need to do something with this very long code later on. We have a default policy already specified. We're not going to go into that now, but you need to know there's a default policy that applies. Oh, also very interesting. There's an operations log table. Anything you do on these systems is locked. That's very cool for audit trail. Okay, now we're going to edit the subtenant for the libraries. Why do we need to edit it? We need to edit. We need to add a user so that uh, the library can actually be used. Okay, add a user. Now, my first user, that's going to be me, it's going to be uh, Martin, no email, at so now user Martin can connect to the cloud storage, to the tenant, what he needs later on is a token, its user ID and this brilliant shared key that's generated. Now, if I want to have someone else connect to the uh, environment, I add someone else, say, creep, strange colleague of mine, add it. And now in a minute, also we will be able to connect to the system using the token, the shared key, and his username. Okay, so we logged into the system, we created the tenant, we created users for the tenants, and the next step will be that we actually go, are going to connect to the cloud storage using uh, Atmos Fox or uh, Gladinet and store data in the cloud but that's for the next video bye